Thank you. Marjorie, thank you so much, the news agents and from London. What do you think the message should be to Nikki Haley tonight? Well, um, we've been encouraging her to drop out and support President Trump. And I think tonight is, is the clear message that, that President Trump is the clear front runner. He's the winner in our Republican primary. And it's time for Nikki Haley to drop out and support him. Do you think President Trump, Mr. Trump, is closer to picking his VP? And should you be on that list? Oh, you know, that's the question everyone asks. And no, I don't think Nikki Haley should be on the list. Uh, but of course, President Trump will choose who he wants for VP. Would you like to be on that list? He's got a long list. I support President Trump in any way, any way he'd ask me, um, but I can assure you it won't be Nikki Haley. And can you tell me why so many people that support Donald Trump love conspiracy theories, including yourself? He seems to attract lots of conspiracy theorists. Well, let me tell you, you're a conspiracy theorist, and the left and the media spreads more conspiracy theories. We like the truth. We like supporting our Constitution, our freedoms, and America first. So, What about no, Jewish space dead. lasers? No, Tell us about Jewish space no, lasers. No, why don't, you, why don't you go talk about Jewish space lasers? And really, why don't you fuck off? How about that? I'm Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me just say for all of those international viewers out there, we think she's insane too. Just on behalf of the country, I felt like you should know. That was Marjorie Taylor Greene losing her patience while speaking with the news agents, a British podcast. And I gotta say, for a political party that claims to hate censorship and adore freedom of speech, they sure do have quite a low tolerance for any speech that isn't fawning, breathless, groveling right-wing propaganda. Consider too, it's not like the reporter here, Emily Maitlis, hit Green on anything unfair. She was literally asking her about her own beliefs. It wasn't this reporter who suggested that Jewish space lasers were real, it was Green. Here's the now deleted Facebook post from 2018. Now, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because I can promise you we will all walk away from this video dumber, but she does mention that regarding the devastating wildfire that spread throughout California called the Campfire in 2018, quote, there are too many coincidences to ignore, and explaining that, quote, oddly, there are all these people who have said that they saw what looked like lasers or blue beams of light causing the fires, before reasoning that a vice chairman at Rothschild Incorporated International Banking Firm was involved. Because, of course, ah, Republicans, they're not sending their best. And look, not for nothing, but the fact that she got so furious about someone else simply invoking her own words is nothing more than a tacit admission that even she knows how ridiculous her own claims are. She gets so angry because even she sees how embarrassing she is. As they say, a hit dog will holler. Now in terms of the broader question, why so many Trump supporters love conspiracy theories, the answer is simple. Republicans and Trump specifically lose a lot. Their media ecosystem is steeped in lies, their candidates are horrible, and their agenda is something out of the last century. And that threatens them on an existential level. And so because they won't change their views, after all their entire identity is predicated on their draconian Christo-fascism, they need to fall back on conspiracy theories to explain away their losses. It can't possibly be that people don't like us and insurrectionists attempting to undermine a free and fair election. And so surely the answer is that Hugo Chavez conspired with the Biden campaign to steal the election from Trump. It can't possibly be that more Americans voted for Joe Biden than Trump. And so surely the answer is that the deep state is rigging voting machines with Chinese bamboo fiber infused ballots. It can't possibly be that climate change is making our weather events more extreme. And so clearly the Jews are training lasers from space onto forests to spark wildfires as Jews do. These people are so deluded that rather than acknowledge the very simple reality right in front of them, that Americans aren't on board with their backwards agenda and ushering in the fall of democracy, there must be some other explanation, even if they have to invoke dead Latin American rulers to do it. Remember, their conspiracy theories may sound insane, but the fact that Jewish space lasers and pizza pedophile rings and politicians drinking children's blood and deep state false flag operations and fake school shootings, if that utter insanity is the best they can do to explain away their own beliefs, then they are betraying just how tenuous their beliefs actually are. As for the Nikki Haley of it all, she's since dropped out, but notably has not yet endorsed Donald Trump. And the reason that Green is so insistent that she does is because she, like Trump and the rest of the MAGA GOP, know that Nikki Haley exposed a devastating reality about the Republican base. It is fundamentally fractured. Nikki Haley was never going to be the Republican nominee, but she was extremely effective in offering a platform to a sizable faction of Republican voters who needed to register their disgust and their disdain for the presumptive Republican nominee, Donald Trump. And that is exactly what they did in state after state after state. 
Trump was only able to garner 51% in Iowa, 54% in New Hampshire, 60% in South Carolina, 68% in Michigan, 46% in Vermont. And so keep in mind, his job right now is to expand his coalition. The guy lost in states like Michigan and Wisconsin and Arizona and Georgia and Pennsylvania in 2020 by razor thin margins. He should be appealing to moderates and independents and suburban moms out there. Instead, he can barely garner support from his own base. If that is not a blinking red light for the Trump campaign, I don't know what is. And by the way, don't take my word for it. Take it from those voters themselves. Anything but Trump. <laughs> that was your priority. <laughs> That's my priority. Is that the biggest reason you supported Nikki Haley? Yeah, I'd say. Because of Donald Trump? Yes. Yeah. I would vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump in a heartbeat. Republican, right? I am. What do you do when that is then? If he is the nominee and it's he and, and Joe Biden, what do you do? I vote for Joe Biden. I'm Nikki Haley. Um, I think Donald Trump um, is a threat to the well-being of our country. If she drops out, would you be disappointed if she endorsed Trump? She does, uh, I'll vote Democrat. No. That's all there is to it. It's important to me to keep Trump out of office again. Um, Project 2025, I've read it, I've studied it. It's scary, it's frightening. I've lived in a constitutional democracy all my life. I want to remain that way and I want my grandchildren to grow up in one. And Not a dictatorship. And I'm curious, over the last two elections, um, mm -hmm. have you voted Trump in the past? Was it something where you voted for him, you trusted him, and you were disappointed? Yes, I voted for him in 2016. I am a registered Republican, and I, I regretted that vote almost immediately. <laughs> in fact, I spoke with former Obama speechwriter and host of Pod Save America, John Favreau, about this very topic, whether Haley will ultimately endorse Donald Trump, and here was his argument for Haley against doing so. Well, I guess the real question should be, does she endorse Donald Trump or does she endorse nobody? Right. So I think I'm at a, like a 20, 30 percent chance she endorses nobody. But I, I think it's I think she ends up getting behind Trump. But again, I would make the case to her that like even for her own political future, that like it, she should not endorse anyone. Well, do you think that she's past the point of no return? I mean, she's now she is the only person standing in between Donald Trump launching his like a full scale campaign against Joe Biden. Definitely past the not. point of no return, so which then, is why I was. So then what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. Because if she so let's let's go down the path. She uh, endorses Donald Trump and then Donald Trump loses. Right. Then she is not the future of the party because she endorsed Donald Trump. Right. She was part of it. Someone else is going to come along and, tw and say, you know what? This whole Trump thing, this cost us. throw them all, throw yeah, them all, all out the window. Yeah. Now, say she uh, endorses Donald Trump. Donald Trump wins. Uh, he's, he's not going to forget. <laughs> he holds a grudge. Yeah. Right? She's out. She's yeah. out no matter what. So there's no benefit to endorsing him. There's no future for Nikki Haley in a Trump-led Republican Party. Yeah. There's just none. So, and I think she knows that. So if she knows that, then... Stepping back, right, she's going to get a lot of shit from the Trump people. She's going to be exiled from the Republican Party. She's going to have no future. But if Donald Trump loses and Joe Biden wins and she didn't endorse uh, Donald Trump, then she can say, I still think she doesn't get a nomination because I think the party is too Trumpy, the base of the party. But at least she has an argument in 2028 where she says, I told you so. I told all of you that this was yeah. going to happen. The fact is that if Haley truly believes that Donald Trump is even half as dangerous as she claims he is, and if she wants to extricate her party from the grasps of him and his sycophants, then she should absolutely not give her voters a permission structure to go ahead and vote for him by endorsing him. She has a rare opportunity right now to help facilitate the demise of Trumpism. And the only way she does that is by refusing to bend the knee to Donald Trump. And then maybe, just maybe, that'll also have the added benefit of preventing more idiots like Marjorie Taylor Greene from entering Congress and serving as a punchline for the rest of the world. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.